Hi and welcome to this video on the introduction to the elements of music and let's, we're looking today at harmony. So firstly welcome. In this little video I'll explain what the elements of music are and then I'll give a brief explanation of each of those elements and then we're going to have a look at much further and deeper into what harmony in music actually is. So the eight elements of music are in alphabetical order dynamics, form, harmony, melody, rhythm, texture, timbre and tonality. Each of the elements of music are like an ingredient in a recipe. Just like a recipe needs a little bit of some ingredients and a lot more of others, they all contribute to the overall flavour of the dish. The combination and amount of an ingredient is like the chef adding their personal flair and spice to a dish. So too, a musician and composer uses the elements of music to flavour their musical dish to suit their taste and personal style. So the eight elements of music and their definitions are, dynamics means how loud or soft the music is, form refers to the order and arrangement of the parts of the music, harmony, which we are looking at today, is the instruments that support the melody with chords, melody is a series of pitches that makes a tune, rhythm is how long or short a sound is, texture is the layers of sound and how sparse or dense the music is, timbre refers to the unique sound quality of an instrument, and tonality is the overall sound of the instrument as sorry, as of the music as pleasant or unpleasant. So let's look at harmony a little bit deeper. A simple definition for harmony is the succession of chords or chordal progressions made by two or more parts or voices playing and or singing together. Another way to put it would be to say that harmony in music comes from any pitched instrument that performs with and supports the melody. In, in the Western music tradition, there are many music theories and rules re and regulations that composers and musicians follow when creating or performing a harmonic musical line in a piece of music. For many music creators, melody and harmony and tonality are all intertwined and each musical element depends on the other to create the whole. There are several musical terms that can help you to appreciate and describe the harmony in a piece of music. These come under the broader headings of chords, harmonic rate of change, harmonic role, cadence, key signature, overall sound and modulation. These terms will all be explained in further detail in the video. So to, de so to define these, a chord is simply a group of two or more instruments played at the same time. A chord pattern is a series of chord chords performed in a repeated pattern or progression. Now this information will actually come underneath harmonic rate of change. Uh, the harmonic rate of change is the distance between chord changes. Harmonic roll is any in pitched instrument that performs and supports the melody. A cadence is two chords played at the end of a phrase or section. The key signature is the combination of sharps or flats at the beginning of the staff. Modulation means a change away from the original key. And the overall, overall sound refers to the sound of the tonality of the music as consonant or dissonant. So let's look at chords. A chord in its simplest, simplest form is a group of two or more notes performed together. Many chords are based on a triad. A triad is a group of three notes performed together to form a chord. Usually a triad is made up of the first, third and fifth note of any given scale. A chord can be played by an individual instrument like the guitar, ukulele, piano and banjo, or it can be created by several instruments performing together like a choir or a brass band or any other type of ensemble with pitched instruments. Depending on the instrument, chords can be played in a few different ways. On instruments like the guitar, banjo and ukulele, chords are often strummed. The action of strumming is to move across the strings quickly in an upward or downward direction. Another way that a chord can be played on most instruments that can play more than one note is as a block chord. A block chord is when all the notes of the chord are played together at the same time. The arpeggio is another way of playing a chord. An arpeggio is the playing, e playing of each of the notes, sorry, an arpeggio is playing each of the notes of the chord in a repeated melodic pattern. On the piano, this technique is usually performed in the left hand. Harmonic rate of change. The harmonic rate of change is the distance between chord changes. This could be quick or slow and is counted in the number of bars or beats. This is linked to the chord progression or the chord pattern in the music. In a lot of popular music, the chords change every bar, sometimes every two bars. 
There are many common chord progressions that have been used in many different genres and songs. One of the most common chord progressions is the 12 bar blues. This chord progression was featured as the basis of the men of many blues and jazz songs from the early 1900s. In the 1950s, when rock and roll was in its infancy, many rock songs were based around the 12 bar blues. The chord pattern is on the next slide. It is often played with a 4 bar phrasing. So here we have 1, 1, 1. I'll try that again because I think I've miscounted. 1, 1, 1, 1, 4, 4, 1, 1, 5, 4, 1, 1. Now, if the 12 bar blues is repeated, this chord here is often a 5, 7, okay? And they repeat it that way. But if we we're in the key of C major, this would be C, 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 F, F, C, C, G, F, C, C. And each of those um, chords is usually played for four beats. In the clips suggested below and in the description, you'll see some examples of the music using the 12 bar blues. Another popular chord progression is the ice cream chord change. This chord pattern became popular from the end of the 1950s and was used in a lot of songs. It is still used today in many, 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 many songs. The chord progression, which is often played with the chords changing every bar or four beats, is 1, 6, 4, 5. In the clips on the next slide and in the description, there are some examples of this chord progression in a very, few very famous songs. Please note, in the Axis of Awesome four-chord song, there are some lyrics that may not be appropriate for younger students. Now, if I was going to put these um, chords into the C major scale, the, the order of um, 1, 6, 4, 5 is... C, A minor, F, G. And here are the, um, the links that you can um, have a look at this chord progression in action. Harmonic roll. There are two main harmonic roles that support the melody, melodic accompaniment and the bass line. For each of these roles, their performance is based around the chord pattern or progression that is accompanying the melody. Any pitched instrument can perform the melodic accompaniment or the bass line. Usually, the bass line is performed by instruments in a low bass register. The instruments performing the melodic accompaniment in any given piece of music will depend on the ensemble. For example, in a choir, the melody might be sung by the soprano section and the rest of the choir is singing in harmony as the melodic accompaniment. Whereas, in a rock band, the melody is often sung by the lead vocalist and the two electric guitars are performing the melodic accompaniment with the bass guitar playing the bass line. There are two other harmonic roles that can be used, although it is not as common as the two previous ones. A pedal point is the playing of a single repeated pitch to maintain a tonal centre. This was a com common harmonic technique used in the Baroque period. Another harmonic role is that of a drone. A drone is a long continuous note that is played to also maintain a tonal centre. Instruments such as the bagpipes and didgeridoo naturally do this, but this harmonic role can be performed by any pitched instrument. Cadence a cadence is two chords performed at the end of a phrase or section of music. In the next slide, there is a list of the most common cadences and their definitions. In music, chords are often written as Roman numerals, and these are based on the eight notes of the scale. This means that I is one or first, I, I is two or second, I, I, I is three or third, I, V is four or fourth, V is fifth, um, five or fifth, V1 is 6 or 6th, V11 is 7 or 7th, the 8th note is the first note an octave higher. It is sometimes written as 8VA, standing for octave. So the perfect cadence is a cadence that is made up of chords 5 to 1. This is the most common chord, um, sorry, most common cadence um, around. A plagal cadence is a cadence made up of chords 4 to 1 sometimes called the Amen cadence. Imperfect cadence is a cadence that is made up of chords 1 to 5. This is often used in the middle of a piece of music to bridge sections. And the interrupted cadence is a cadence that is made up of chords 5 to 6. This is sometimes used to transition to the relative minor key. So if we were again in the key of C major, 
5 to 1 would be the chord of G to C. 4 to 1 would be the chords of F to C. An imperfect cadence would be chords 1 to 5, which is C to G. And the interrupted would be 5 to 6, which is C to A minor. Key signature. A key signature is the combination of sharps or flats that is written on the staff at the beginning of each line of the score after the clef. The key signature and the number of sharps or flats determines the key that the music is composed in. In traditional Western music, there are two main types of key signatures, major and minor. Each major key signature has a related and similar minor key. Without going into too much detail, there is a lot of musical theory with rules to work out the given key of any piece of music. In simple terms, a major key will sound brighter and happier in mood, and the minor key sounds more mellow and sound sad in mood. Overall sound. The overall sound of the music will depend on the tonality used. The tonality and sound is connected to the key that the, the music is played in, as well as the instrumentation used. As well as describing the music in, in as a major or minor key, the music can be described as consonant or dissonant. The definition of consonant music is pleasant sounding, and the dissonant is the opposite, which is unpleasant sounding. Of course this can be subject to musical preference and opinion, but generally people can agree on the overall sound of a piece of music. Composers will use this sound to make the music pleasing or even creepy, depending on the key signature or tonality used. Using clashing notes to form unusual chords can make the listener uneasy, and this is perfect for use in horror films. Other types of sound can be created when the music is written using different scales like the medieval church modes, pentatonic scales, blues scales and even world music scales from different parts of the globe. Modulation Modulation in music is simply a change away from the home key. In a lot of modern music, composers use modul modulation to create a lift. This is done when the music goes up a semitone into another key, for example from from the key of E major to F major. A great example of this is the rock classic Joy to the World, performed by Three Dog Night. Near the end of the song, the chorus is repeated a semitone higher. In this video, the key change is at 159. The link to this video is also in the description below. Not all modulation is the simple upward motion of a semitone. Some modulation is to the relative keys of the original key signature. Sometimes the modulation is to the relative minor or major key, or more often it is to the dominant or fifth key. This modulation is a common feature in a lot of classical compositions. So why is harmony important? In Western music tradition, most people would agree that the melody is the most important part of the music. The melody and the series of pitches that it consists of determines the overall sound and harmony in the music. If you think of the melody as being the main part of the meal, then the harmony will be the parts of the meal that accompany the main ingredient. For example, if you order a steak at a restaurant, you normally don't just get the steak. The meal comes with other things like a salad, some mashed potato and even a yummy sauce. Together, on the plate, they make a perfect and enjoyable meal. The accompanying food is not in competition with the steak, but rather there to make the meal more enjoyable. Harmony is what supports and accompanies the melody. The different parts of the harmony make the melody more enjoyable and interesting. Music Appreciation and Harmony When appreciating a piece of music, most people concentrate on the melody. Next try, time, try going beyond the melody and listen for the accompanying instruments and what they are doing. Are they playing chords? How are they playing the chords? What instruments is the playing the bass line? What instruments are performing the melodic accompaniment? Does this change between sections of the music? How quickly do the chords change? Is there a chord progression being repeated? Even better, next time you are performing as part of an ensemble, switch up the harmonic roles. You might like what you hear, and even better yet, you will have improved your skills as a musician. Remember that the elements of music are like ingredients in a recipe. Sometimes it is a good thing to try something new. You never know you might like the flavour. If you would like a free set of the Elements of Music listening question cards to begin your music appreciation journey, use the link you can see here, or use the link in the description below. You might even want to check out what resources are ready for you to purchase and download today in my store, Do Your Teaching Resources.
Use this link to browse over 500 Music Class products today. Until next time, happy listening and thanks for watching.